Writing an essay is not an easy task, especially under pressure and with very short time. In this video, I'll explain you how to study for the two questions in the writing section on the TOEFL and not panic at all. Follow these tips here and you'll be more than fine. Hey guys, welcome to the channel Nova Tips. I'm Leo Nova and in this video I want to tell you uh, what really works for the writing section on TOEFL. If you want to watch this video 100% in Portuguese, just click on the link up here. Now, let's see what I bring for you. The writing section is the last one of the test and by now you are sick and tired of the test. This part of the exam is divided into two essays, the independent and the integrated, and you have a total of 15 minutes to type them. I'll explain each one in detail later on this video, okay? Well, I won't even consider the most obvious thing I've mentioned in all other videos here, practice. Without practicing, you not achieve anything. Write 10, 30, 50, 100 essays of each type. There are a lot of websites on the internet that gives you various topics for you to work on and don't forget to time yourself to know if you're doing well or not. If you want some tips on which websites have these essays topics, leave your comment below here, okay? <laughs> Tip number one, be straightforward. When it comes to write an essay, at least in Portuguese, we have a habit of writing more elaborated texts. If your native language is not Portuguese like mine, I'm not sure how it goes, but if so, forget about it. Of course, you not go to the other extreme and write as if you were in the first grade, right? My house is blue, I like my house. No, please. It's nice to have one or two sentences with a more complex structure, but don't overdo it. Be organized and objective. Think about the topic, uh, what are the two or three arguments that you are going to use. Very important one. Unlike in the speaking section, where you need to be as natural as possible, here it's cool to use fancy words to enrich your vocabulary. Do you remember that Word or Excel file that I mentioned in the video of the 7 killer tips to master on TOEFL, this one in the card here? That's where you should save them to give a boost to your grade. It's not about creating entire sentences and memorizing them, because they may not adapt to the topic and you either have wasted your time memorizing or you try to use it anyway, running away from the context and showing that it was memorized sentence ending up losing points. So my tip is, memorize some words only. Half an hour before arriving to the test and the night before, even better if both, memorize around 10 fancy words that will give your text a boost. I memorized those words, repeating them to myself before arriving to the test site. I kept repeating the words to myself during the validation process until I was actually at my station to start the test. Even before the timer starts running, I wrote down the words on a piece of paper that they provided to me and done. The test hasn't even started yet and I got rid of those words. And this is a good moment to do this because the inspectors are still concerned with getting everyone inside and they will not notice that you were writing something. But Nova, which words might be interesting for me to write down? Well, as you start to practice a lot, and in this case I suggest reading a lot of books and articles, you start to see that there are certainly words that fit in a variety of contexts. One that I use it on mine was the word myriad, which means the same as a lot. Keep in mind that words like a lot, good, bad, every are weak words and shown in almost 100% of the essays, so if you can avoid them, it would be great for you. Maintain the standard American writing structure, which is introduction, body paragraphs, and conclusion. I had the privilege of meeting a person who grades the TOEFL writing test, and she gave me valuable tips. Opposed to what we hear out there that it's okay to use contradicting arguments in your body paragraphs of the second essay, 
it'll hardly be a 5, which is the maximum score. It's not impossible though, just harder to structure your essay. Could it be just this person's opinion? Yeah, it could, but my writing score was improved considerably, from 21 to 26, just following this tip. So think about three arguments and write about them. And don't forget to focus on the time, the clock doesn't run in your favor. <laughs> Use synonyms. There's nothing more boring than reading a text where you read every time. The guy had a white shirt. The guy was awesome. The guy defends his rights. No. Instead, try to use the synonyms like the boy had a white shirt. The indistinct man was awesome. The victim's husband defended his rights. Anyway, you got the idea, right? This shows the examiner that you have a greater command of the language and helps you with essential points for your final grade. Use the fancy words on both essays. Remember those words you memorized and wrote down on the piece of paper? So, it's time to use them in both essays. With the inside information I had, the same examiner does not correct a candidate's two essays. When they receive the essays to evaluate, they receive a package of the same questions. That means all questions one or all questions two. And they have four hours in a row to evaluate them. If you can memorize more than 10 words, great. But 10 is already a very significant number. And of course, make sure you are using them correctly. <laughs> Run away from idioms. Now, but what is an idiom? Idioms or idiomatic expressions are sentences that have a different meaning from its individual words. A classic example would be rain, cats and dogs. It doesn't mean that there are cats and dogs falling from the sky. No, the meaning of this sentence is that it's pouring rain or it's raining a lot. People tend to use this in essays to be cool, to pretend they are native speakers. No, you are not. That's the reason why we're taking this exam. On top of that, there's a high probability that you will use the idiom in the wrong way. This tip deserves your like, right? Don't forget to hit the like button here. Focus on the words you know will help you a lot more and give you more flexibility, trust me. But if you still want to learn some idioms in English, leave your comment below that I'll make a video for you. <laughs> Always review your texts, but don't read in a fast pace. Read word by word, it's more than common to misspell a word. These are some points you may end up losing for lack of attention. Allow at least 5, ideally 10, minutes to review your texts. The main secret to accomplish a good grade in all sections is practice a lot. Nova, I only have 50 minutes to write two essays and you are asking me to save 10 minutes to review it? Yes, that's exactly what I'm asking. And that's why you should practice a lot. At the beginning of this video, I said that I was going to explain more detail each question the integrated and the independent. <laughs> about the integrated, as soon as the test starts, question one will be the integrated. But what does it mean? Well, basically, it means that you will have to read a text, listen to an audio, and then write the, the essay. You will have three minutes to read the text before starting the audio. At this moment, Focus only on getting the main idea and write down the keywords, but don't worry about memorizing anything, because this text will come back to the screen later. When these three minutes are up, it's time for the audio. The audio will be on the same topic, but of course, from a different perspective. This audio takes an average of two minutes and it won't play again, so pay attention. After the audio, the text comes back, and now you have 20 minutes to write your essay. The first essay will always ask you to summarize everything you have read and heard. But Nova, how do I summarize all this? Remember what I said in the beginning of this video that you need to get straight to the point? So, after hearing the audio, you will identify three arguments called supporting details or supporting points. Then, it's time to outline your essay. In paragraph 1, 
show the idea behind the text and the audio and the three supporting points you choose. The next three paragraphs will be each one to talk in more detail about each supporting detail you got. Benova, what if I can't get three supporting points? Look, three would be the ideal world, but if you can't, go with two very well written. The chances of getting a score five will decrease considerably, but it's not impossible. And the fifth and last paragraph will be the conclusion. To sum up everything you have written, the time available here is a bit shorter because you don't have to think about your answer. It is based on everything you read and heard. And on top of that, you only have to write down 150 to 225 words. Oh, something very important here. Whenever you mention something written in the passage, do not use exactly the same words. That means do not copy and paste. Type using your own words, otherwise you may lose points for not demonstrating your proficiency. This technique is called paraphrasing. Another tip it just occurred to me. In academic essays like this, you don't use contractions like don't, he's, shouldn't, no. Here you write do not, he is or he has, should not. Which is great because it counts as two words instead of only one. Every week I'm bringing more content and to stay on top, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Independent question. For many, this is the worst part. You have 30 minutes to do everything and write at least 300 words. Oh no, but that's easy. 300 words in 30 minutes? That means 10 words per minute, a word per each 6 seconds. That's easy, I can make it. Well, at least you showed me that you're good at math. Too bad it's not part of the TOEFL exam. You just forgot to include a few factors in these 30 minutes. Reading the question, thinking about the answer, outlining your ideas, and having time to review the essay in the end. At least here there will be no text to read or audio to hear. The independent question is generally related to your opinion on a particular subject. If you agree or disagree, what do you prefer between two options? There will be no right or wrong. That's what you think and the arguments to support your opinion. Here goes the same tip I gave on the speaking. It doesn't matter your real opinion on the subject. Nobody will evaluate you for it. The important thing is to know how to develop your answer. Whatever allows you to think of three arguments that you know how to develop well, that's what you should go for. The essay structure here is the same as in the question one, but a little bit more elaborated in order to fulfill the 300 words. The difference is that in the three body paragraphs, you will show your arguments, justify why you choose the, the arguments and give an example. Do you see how these 30 minutes start to get short? And that's why I gave you that tip to be objective. Use practical and objective examples which do not need long explanations for you to express your idea. You will not be evaluated for being brilliant ideas or politically correct justifications. You will be assessed for your grammar, connection between ideas, use of all types of sentences, and so on. No, but this is impossible! Now the time is too short! I agree with you, it, it is really too short. But no, it's not impossible. If I did it, so can you. Everyone can. So what do you have to do? Practice a lot. I hope you're enjoying the videos and that I'm helping you out to get ready for the test. See you in the next videos.